state of primary schools in Kenya, life during and after the pandemic, youth empowerment in the country, and finally a mandatory vaccine. Live from CSN Newsroom, I'm Christian Schmitz, and welcome to our viewers. And we welcome our viewers in Kenya and around the world. We are with you for the next 30 minutes. Thanks for joining us, the CSN Newsroom. May I sign off? As the continent continues to lag behind in development and infrastructure, the future and lives of many African youth, youths have been affected and hampered by the rise of corruption cases and the pandemic. We take a look at how the youth from different countries have taken a step to improve their future. In the outskirts of Naivasha town, we meet Benson, a young artist. He invites us to his gallery, which also works in his workshop. Benson and many other young African youth in Africa have taken the step to improve their lives and not only depend on the government. Join me as we take a stroll into this gallery as he tells us more about himself. Okay, here in is an African lady, to be specific, uh, a Trukana lady. Uh, Nikichora in Sana Sana about culture, but there's that. Mm, okay. Ile sababu mfanya ni chagua kutumia a lady, could paint a lady. The you know a lady and a kuanga like a simple. We are missing me the whole community. Uh, because once you see a lady, you know you have to know a toy. Then obviously a husband or a man somewhere. So, like na chora hapa e painting ko e painting ko na a lot of emotions. Unum tu na jali bukonya sha emotions. Hizo kutoa hizo emotions kwenye gali ya macho kuna vinye na taka itoke and you can feel it uki gali ya. Ah, then she's a beautiful lady. Then hizi vitu zey na taka kuweka shanga uku. Then up a kwashingo kutakuwa na either uh, necklaces, either shanga, and uh, itakuwa imeonyesha about uh, a message ya culture and also the the the, the your sasa ubuhimu wa women wa society.
Okay, so okay, na piece kama hii nilikuwa najaribu kuonyesha how to preserve mm, forest na eh, misitu. Ah, uh, tutakuwa in a better position ya kushia this world na wild animals. Yeah, you know, this world tunapaswa kuishi pamoja na tuishi na wanyama. So, once we preserve the forest, tuna ill forest in itself and also in a good habitat ya the wild animals. Okay, I'm Benson Kerudu. I'm an artist, or a painter. Yeah, we to paint paid sana sana wanyama, nature, and also kiasi kiasi about culture. So Benson, what what inspired you to start painting? Okay, you are going to talent then um, after high school sikupata masomo sikuendelea na masomo so from there nilianza kufikiria nini naweza nini nyingine naweza tumia maybe as a weapon kwa ile then nika nika decide sasa kufuata art um, talent yangu sasa the art kaanza ku paint then nikajipata nimeingia sana kwa art that hakuna kitu kingine ningefanya ili furahishe kama art so you would want to dance that quiet. So like, um, what do you do to inspire uh, others through your, through your art? Sorry? Una, how do you inspire others through your art? Oh, through my art. Okay. Mimi napenda sana cult, no, nature. Na iyo naeza sema about nature ina to funds about to preserve forests and all this. Then, Mimi huwa mka kila siku naingia kwa 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 kwa, kwa, kwa studio yangu nafanya kazi. So I think hiyo ni inspiration pia kwa vijana kuonyesha wanaweza tumia talent like art ama talent nyingine yote kuji support kujisimamia kwa maisha, kuipa base and all those. So inspiration yangu ni kwa vijana ni kuonyesha talent pia inaweza fanya. And uh, message yangu kwa art ni to preserve nature and culture. Yes. So like, uh, apart from just, uh, what, what how, like, different type of arts you do? Okay, myself, Nico, nime diversify sana, nafanya na art, art in a sort of from abstract, nature, wildlife, and culture. Iso, iso, sana, sana, huwana nil nazi. It's every parent's dream to have their child have an education which will mold them into independent individuals. This dream came to a reality for many when in 2003 when the free education was rolled in in public primary schools. But with that, it came a rising number of students. Almost 18 years since the free primary education was being introduced, more and more children are being admitted to schools and yet the infrastructure hasn't been improved. Our education reporter Mark Mchuma looks at the state of the schools in the country in comparison In 2021, 18 years since the free primary education was introduced in the country, the situation is dire. In this school, people have mastered to use the limited space in their desks for both their textbooks and exercise books. A desk that is meant to be used by two pupils is being used by four and up to five pupils. Space here is luxury. A class that was meant to hold 40 pupils now holds over 100 pupils. The population Learners versus their resources available is also straining the free primary education. This is not the situation in other neighboring countries and other leading countries in the world. Education is the only equalizer in any society, but with crowded classrooms and a people to teacher ratio of 100 is 2, 1 is to 100. With the poor facilities, we decided to investigate what the pupils in the classrooms schools eat during lunch hour as compared to global counterparts. We discovered that pupils in the country hardly get any meals from the schools as compared to leading countries where the children and pupils are well looked after 
which improves a ch- child's health and state of mind of not having to track back in some cases for up to kilometers just for lunch. In most cases, these children fail to go back to school after a long back home to get a meal. Reporting for CSN News. On December 1st, 2019, a patient in Wuhan started showing signs of viral pneumonia. That patient is said to be the first documented case of the virus. Throughout the month, a series of unknown virus cases started to spread throughout, the, throughout Wuhan. Symptoms include a fever, difficulty in breathing and a dry cough. Within a month, over 40, 40 cases had been announced to the WHO by the Chinese government, with many of the cases having been reported to have visited an open-air market. Fast forward, the virus started to spread around the world, which was facilitated by the vast movement of people. Countries started to impose restrictions and lockdowns to help ease the spread of the virus. Many companies and farms started to cut down costs by firing thousands, of, if not millions, of employees around the world due to reduced demands for goods and services. Small business owners forced to close shops due to, due to government orders. School and learning institutions are also closed, with everyone at home and with no income flowing in. Many families found it hard to sustain their basic needs. Many African countries have lost revenues from its exports due to decreased demand. Such as countries such as Ethiopia and Kenya who export coffee and flowers to the rest of the world saw a decrease of demand which affected their revenue. With Africa heavily invested in tourism, COVID-19 has a hard hit on the tourism industry, especially the flights suspended to fo- and foreign countries introducing travel bans. So far, Africa hasn't faced the highest number of deaths that was faced by Italy and China, but it's worth uh, to note that the immune o- the economy fallout that the rest of the world is experiencing. Governments around the world have set up measures to vaccinate its population. Different pharmaceutical companies are against, are against time to produce the vaccine to different nations to help, the, to help control the COVID-19. For the vaccine to have an effect, 60 or 70 percent of the adults need to have one. Immunization cards and travel pass are being introduced and will be given to those who will be vaccinated. Travel restrictions will be put in place to those who have not been vaccinated. Doesn't this raise concern to people's democracy and choices? Governments, especially in the Western countries, have put in rules to all civil servants to have the vaccine without accounting for their opinions. I'm not happy at all. I mean, this feels like 1981 all over again, or in the 1980s all over again, when the AIDS pandemic just broke out in SA. It feels like the same thing. It's It's like a replay, but this time they're doing it in our face. For now, though, governments are trying to show that the vaccine is safe and it's there routine back to normal life. In the outskirts of Naifasha town, we meet Benson, a young artist. He invites us to his gala, which also works in his workshop. Benson and many other young African youths in Africa 
have taken the step to improve their lives and not only depend on the government. Join me as we take a stroll into this gallery as he tells us more about himself. Okay, here in Afanya Saini, an African lady, to be specific, uh, a Trukana lady. Nikichora uh, in Sana Sana about culture, but there's that. Mm, okay, ile sababu of Afanya Nicha who could be a lady, could paint a lady, the you know, a lady and a kuanga like a symbol, who must be at the whole. Community, uh, because once you see a lady, you know, you have a toy, then obviously a husband or a, a man somewhere. So, I like to nature, a painting score, a painting on a lot of emotions. Unum to Najalibu Konesha emotions, his or put his emotions, Kangalia, Macho, Kunavine, Nataka, I talk, and you can feel it, Uki Angalia. Uh, then she's a beautiful lady. Then is it to the Nataka Kueka Shanga Uku? Then Upper Kwashingo Kutakuana, these uh, necklaces, Izo Shanga, and uh, Itakui Mayonesha about uh, the message of culture and also the, 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 the your sister, Ubuhimu, women, who society. Okay, so I can piece come here. You can just imagine how to preserve forest. Me see too. Ah, it's in a better position here to share this world now. Wild animals. Yeah, you know this world to no pass away. To wish for more than to wish in our nyama. So once we preserve the forest, to na new forest in a preserve and also in a good habitat here, the wild animals. Okay, I'm Benson Kerudu. I'm an artist or a painter. Yeah, I want to paint Sana Sana Wanyama, nature, and also Kiasi Kiasi about culture. So, Benson, what inspired you to start painting? Okay, if you are going to talent. Then um, after high school, I masomo, masomo. 
So from there nilianza kufikiria nini naweza nini nyingine naweza tumia maybe as a weapon kwa hiyo like nika nika decide sasa kufuata art ah talent yangu sasa the art kaanza ku paint then nikajipata nimeingia sana kwa art that hakuna kitu kingine ningefanya ili furahishe kama art so hivyo ndio nilianza kwa art so like um what do you do to inspire uh, others through your through your art sorry una how do you inspire others through your art oh through my art okay mimi napenda sana cult no nature uh, na hiyo naweza sema about nature ina to fund about to preserve forest and all this then mimi huamka kila siku naingia kwa 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 kwa, kwa, kwa studio yangu nafanya kazi so i think hiyo ni inspiration pia kwa vijana kuonyesha wanaweza tumia talent like art ama talent nyingine yote kuji support kujisimamia kwa maisha kuipa base and all so inspiration yangu ni kwa vijana ni kuonyesha talent pia inaweza fanya and uh, message yangu kwa art ni ku preserve nature and culture yes so like uh, apart from just uh, what, what how, like different type of art you do okay myself niko nime diversify sana nafanya na art art ina zote from abstract nature wildlife and culture hizo hizo sana sana huwa na deal nazo